The European Union has struck a controversial investment deal with China. The EU has hailed the accord, saying it will give European companies better access to Chinese markets. But critics say those economic benefits come at the expense of human rights. For seven years, European Union representatives have been haggling with China at the negotiating table. The results were presented at a joint virtual press conference. Market access for both sides will be improved. A level playing field means that Chinese state-owned enterprises will no longer be given preferential treatment through subsidies. And for the first time, China commits to following environmental, climate, social, as well as occupational health and safety standards. But when it comes to those standards, Chinese President Xi Jinping made only vague promises in the agreement. China has imprisoned up to one million Uyghurs in labor and re-education camps in Xinjiang province. She has promised to sign a convention against forced labor, but no date has been set and sanctions haven't been discussed. Even vague promises around market access haven't been convincing. What the, the agreement is doing is confirming to the Chinese companies that they have access to the European market, which they always had. Uh, the problem is the other way around. It's about the access of European companies to the Chinese market, which has always been more closed in terms of investment because of the way that China entered into the World Trade Organization as a developing economy with special rights. Even though there have been some breakthroughs concerning competition, both sides are not yet on equal footing. So they will most likely meet more often around the negotiating table in the coming years. All right, let's bring in Sophie Richardson, the China Director of Human Rights Watch. Sophie, welcome. From your position, I wonder what do you see? What do you read between the lines of this trade deal? Well, I think there are two variables here that should make everyone quite sceptical. And the first is that the Chinese government is just devoid of credibility when it comes to commitments, not just around human rights, but around issues of, of trade or even security. And this is a government that regularly signs binding international agreements and then ignores them. But I think the other variable is that there is very strong evidence the use of forced labor in Xinjiang, uh, you know, that has been acknowledged by the EU and member state governments. And there's almost no ability to do uh, the kind of due diligence that's necessary to check on that problem. And so one looks at this agreement and really has to wonder why anybody believes that Beijing will pursue any sorts of reforms on forced labour or other issues in good faith. And so does that then speak to the reason why wasn't the EU firmer with China in terms of a solid commitment to a deadline to improve both human and worker rights? Well, I think there are a lot of variables at stake there. And let's recall that uh, the European Parliament, which, is, which has taken a very strong stand on a number of human rights issues in China, still has to ratify the deal. But you know, even if you looked back at the last 10 years of reports by the EU Chamber of Commerce uh, in China, you know, what you would see is report after report after report complaining about all of the ways in which the Chinese government violates the rules that have already been agreed upon. And so, again, it's very hard to see how this new deal will somehow be, you know, magically different. Sophie, you raised the point that the deal still needs to be ratified in the European Parliament. Does that mean there is still the chance of meaningful improvements to be made to the deal? Well, either one hopes so, either meaningful improvements or uh, you know, a much more uh, honest conversation about what the EU really does value. We've heard a lot of discussion in the last couple of days about uh, the EU's values uh, and how they're reflected in this deal. And I, I just struggle to see how the EU can both condemn the existence of forced labor in China and then sign a deal with the Chinese government that doesn't solve those problems first. That should be foundational if you know, the EU and, and Europeans really care that the clothes they're wearing weren't made by forced labour. Sophie Richardson, China Director of Human Rights Watch, thanks so much. Thank you.